Hi guys, today we're going to do another colour spotlight and this time we're going to talk about Smolt. So this colour is by Winsor & Newton and it is called Dumont's Blue. So it is a blue but it does um, gravitate a little towards a purple. So I'm pulling out a couple of colours here that I think it's kind of in between but you might be yelling at the screen here, um, show me it next to Ultramarine Blue. So I will show you that at the end because ultramarine blue is not actually in my palette. So I, um, I didn't have that to kind of, um, you know, compare it to. And then I realized that I did have a little dot sample of the ultramarine blue. So I do that at the end for you so you can see that. But it still is a little bit more purple. It pulls more towards purple than a blue. So I'm just kind of showing you here last time that, that we did... Um, a hot pink color azalea so I really love this one it's by nibs pens and ink on Etsy and and she goes by nibs pens inks and things on Instagram so I am really in love with her colors at the minute they're super gorgeous and just the um, the way that they're made they're really really nice so I'm just going to grab out a paintbrush here and we will get started so I've got my little cup on the desk of all my bits and pieces that I use and today we're going to use the Da Vinci Petite Gris Pour uh, 20 so I um, my favorite is actually the Escoda Reserve number no. six but I've lost it somewhere in the move so I haven't found it yet and then here is my um, paint palette so this is where we're going to get the color from so here is my little mixing dish and um, you can see I've been playing around with blues and purples and iridescence there quite a bit lately. So in one of the upcoming colour spotlights I will sort of draw this out for you but this is just the colour chart that we put on the side of the page. It's got the... Um, that's the pigment number there, so it has the name, the brand, the pigment number, that's the light fastness, and then how transparent it is, and the staining. So this is a staining colour, but it does lift quite well when we do the lifting test. So it is a granulating colour, so I put that there, and also just to kind of um, test the opacity as well. And so we're going to start with the, the way that I do these swatches. So I like to do the mass tone at the top, which is the color in it just in its full um, full capacity. So next we're going to do a gradient wash. So this is where you kind of start out strong and then you just dip the brush in water once and then um, you kind of pull the color out from there so you don't actually get more color you have a little bit less color and you're just kind of seeing how um, how soft you can get the color so some people like to do the gradient wash very smoothly to try and get a really smooth transition but I'm just looking for uh, the dark color the lightness of the color and then what the color how it sort of performs and how it moves on the paper and then the last thing I do is the um, put a little bit of water down dab the paint in to see how it flows and you can see there that a lot of the other blues travel a lot uh, further but this one just stays um, put pretty much Okay, so this is when we get into some color comparisons. So um, this right here is where I probably could have done uh, ultramarine blue, but again, like I said, I didn't think I had it. Um, then I remembered that I did. So what I've done here is cobalt blue next to it on this side. Uh, and then this is um, violet. So this is the Schmincke Violet. I really like this violet. It actually is really saturated and just has a really nice flow on the page. So I'm putting down some more smalt here so that it can be in between Indanthrone 
and ultramarine violet to kind of show you what that's like as well and if you mix these colors and we will mix them you get something along the lines of the smalt in the middle So you can see there the purples are a little bit stronger than the blue so I am having to keep adding blue there to get that mix right but at the end it's pretty close and this is actually uh, cobalt blue and violet and if you look at Daniel Smith's um, cobalt blue violet it is a pretty similar color to that so that's kind of what they're mixing for that it's a really gorgeous color actually and I've always wanted to get it I don't have it but um, I do actually pull out a, um, like a dot card as well so we can try and uh, see that in a minute and so one of the things I'm kind of showing you here as well if you don't if you can't get the smalt um, you can use sort of a purple and blue combination to get a pretty close match the good thing about the smalt is that it is just a one pigment color so it's a pigment violet um, so it's interesting it's not a pigment blue it is a violet pigment it just leans a little bit more towards the blue and I did some other preliminary swatches here and I'll refer to this a couple of times but you can see the cobalt violet with the cobalt violet it makes like an ultramarine violet uh, and you can see there the white when you mix it with white it almost goes like a lavender and then here when I mixed it with the violet is I realized that it could it looks like the um, the one that I had always liked from um, Daniel Smith the cobalt blue violet so I just grabbed my um, I have long since cut up my Daniel Smith dot cards I've used them to create like a paint palette in a travel kit and like in a um, travels notebook and then I have a couple of my favorite purple ones in here so this is my little passport size travels notebook and so I just got this off Amazon and I have have this little Kaweco or Kaweco um, pen pouch from Jet Pens and the frosted coconut um, in there and then so in here is where I have the little pouch at the front and I keep these little dot cards And so you can see as well here the sparkle in the kyanite and um, this is where the cobalt blue violet is so there's not much um, I've obviously used that for swatching you can see so um, I'll just try and pull a little bit off that and it ends up being a really really light swatch so I kind of try and lighten the smalt with water as well to see if we can match the you know how light they are
So I get this all packed away and then I realize you might just want to have a quick peek through here. I do have a full flip through on my other channel, Heirloom Lux, so you can check it out over there and go through kind of how I've put everything in there and what I've made and things. But um, I do have like a little watercolor insert in here, so I just kind of pop little ideas in here or things that I you know I'm interested in sort of looking into so I was looking at making a travel palette maybe just with like the purple spectrum okay but back to what we're doing so that is indigo this is moon glow and then i will also swatch shadow violet so you can kind of see you know any next to any of those if you're familiar with any of those and so i think here we're going to start just my favorite mixes with it and so when i do these favorite mixes i'm just kind of mixing it with the ways that i would like to paint with it in paintings and um, I think there's about 15 or so colors that I want to do a color spotlight on and then maybe once we have gone through those I'll come back and mix the color with like a whole 12 color palette so but I just don't have enough paint for that at the minute so I'll have to kind of accrue some paints to be able to do that so at the minute I'm just doing a few mixes with my favorite ways that I like to use it in a painting so the first way here is to mix it with white and basically this becomes like Daniel Smith lavender so I feel like I'm behind I can barely see what's going on here behind the um, voiceover so the first way I swatched it was just a really light swatch of the smalt and then I swatched it twice with the white to try and get a thicker consistency and then I swatched it with the pearl white and now I'm swatching it with gold so I really enjoy um, mixing colors with a metallic at the minute so not always and you can see kind of in the paintings that I do I don't even mix them with metallics and I'm not sure if that's just because I'm afraid of running out <laughs> um, but I yeah I do love to mix paints with metallics so I go through a few of my favorites the next one that I am swatching it with after the gold is the Dawn by Nibs Pens and Inks and I really love this color as well and so now I'm mixing it with the Daniel Smith interference blue I think and I really love this one I really love the Daniel Smith interference blue and the interference lilac so they um, just add a really nice sheen so they're not very bright they're not too bright but they just add something to the painting so now I'm mixing it with the River Vale Porphyry Violet Ochre I, I love this color I've been using this quite a lot lately and um, you can kind of see my favorite shops or favorite paints are Daniel Smith Schmincke Windsor & Newton and then I really love the Rivervale and the Nibs Pens and Inks handmade ones. So I know there's a lot of, you know, options out there. So I'm just giving you the ones that I've kind of settled on. So I'm now swatching it with the Sedona and you can, and the swatch before that was the Shadow Violet just to kind of show you. Um, and I just wanted to see how similar it was with the Porphyry Violet Ochre. So I really love mixing um this color with the browns because you're getting really gorgeous grays so this one here now is the van dyke brown and so it's a really dark deep brown and you get a really nice gray with it So I got a bit carried away on this page. I had had intended to um, 
mix it with a few of these other favorites here and and so i wanted to show you some here that's the moonstone daniel smith and the interference turquoise which i really like as well you can see with the opera rose it goes a really nice sort of a cobalt violet and i really like the shell pink as well that's a really pretty mix um because the shell pink also has white in it so you get sort of that lavendery effect and then i really love it with the pearl white on the right of the page I'll, I'll go back and show that but um it doesn't sort of mix that well with yellows and greens so it really likes to be with the blues pinks uh, purples uh, browns okay so now we're going to use it in some paintings and kind of see how you know how it can be used so what i've done here is i've just gone through and actually sketched because i um, i'll insert some footage of the teacup and the morning orange juice that i'm sketching from so we we actually had it with um, blackberries and raspberries this day so it was a really nice um just a, like a different it's not really orange it's sort of again pulling more towards those muted um, purples and blues and um, so I thought that would be nice and again like I don't drink it in uh, this cup every day but I just thought it would be nice for the um, video and then I also used this plate and also the um, decorations on the other black cup there as well so I kind of drew that across the top of the page you can see like so I really wanted to combine all of these uh, things into this page because they all kind of have that smalt blue um, undertones in my mind okay so we're going to get into the painting now and um, you guys let me know if you want this like if you like this format or if you think I need to sketch it out for you first so I'm not sure what to do there but um, if I you know if you want me to and if I can I will but just sometimes like um, you know I need to kind of hurry and um, or do something different so today I just couldn't do that but uh, what I do, I'm just going to let you watch the painting, but um, just before that I'm going to say I basically used four colours for this. So it was the Smolt by Winsor & Newton, uh, Violet by Schmincke, uh, Sedona Genuine and French Ochre by Daniel Smith. So those were the four colours. I did pull in a little bit of orange just for the orange juice, but you can um, basically use... You know if you have an ultramarine or a cobalt blue a violet like a, a purple um, a burnt sienna and an ochre you can pretty much do a similar thing so i do like the daniel smith french ochre because it's so transparent it's a really pretty color and we might actually do the um the next color spotlight we might do on the french ochre because then i think that makes up a little bit of a mixing palette you've got the um you know azalea or opera rose you've got the smalt and then the french ochre makes up a little mixing palette it's kind of my take on the primaries red yellow and blue
one of the things when you're painting this part is it's just a lot of curves everyone can draw a sort of um, you know a C shape and just curl the ends a little bit and that's basically what it is a lot of those either smaller larger um, different directions and so most complex shapes you can you know just break up into smaller shapes and well all of them but you know it's you if you look for um, smaller sh shapes that you know you'll you'll find that you'll be able to start somewhere so um, I think I also wanted to just talk about the shadow under the plate here so shadows are pretty important to um, give a bit of a 3d effect so here I'm just kind of putting some little flowers on the side of the plate and um, they also had like a butterfly here and I was going to do an, another layer but I kind of liked the way it just kind of blended in a little bit but um, here I'm just doing a shadow on the side here and um, I wanted to just talk about this a bit so there's a few ways to create shadows to make it sort of blend into the paper and one is to put a lot of water down and then to add the um, watercolor and let it blend out and what I'm just doing here is adding the watercolor and then actually adding a few, you know sort of grading it out into the paper and then adding some more darker colors right near the edge where the darkest pieces of the shadow will be and I also like to add um, color into the shadows so it's not just you know a flat shadow because because often shadows um, are made up of a lot of different colors so you know you can add more um, colors into the shadow areas not just one flat gray and so and then here I'm just going back and I'm kind of glazing over the top and layering different colors and just building up the painting So now I'm using my favorite Winsor & Newton gold and I just go around the edges and I'm not doing the whole edge in one solid stroke. I'm just painting parts of the edge. So, you know, where the light might hit it, there might be um, sort of a gleam that you can't see, but I just think it makes it look a little bit more art artistic.
Okay, and the other thing that I wanted to do was paint this other mug that had the sort of ink splotches on it. So this is a really simple design. You've got two um, lines that kind of go into a bit of a V shape, two curves and a curve at the top and then the C, backwards C for the handle. So this is a really simple one if you want to try something and just start somewhere. Um, and I am just making a bit of a muddy color there from the blue and the um, you know from the pa the colors on the palette and then using a bit of the brown and I start to um, fill in the shadows and then I realize that I want the outside shadow to be a bit darker so I grab in a little bit more purple there to to deepen that up So here I've just, I've filled my brush with water and then put, dipped it in the paint and then I've just tapped on the brush to create splotches and then um, I realized that there's too many. So you can just easily pull some of those off and work that into like the shadowy areas of the cup. And so sorry I lost a bit of footage there somewhere so we are done and this is kind of the final result of the page I really like how this one turned out actually and just having that limited palette as well um, it makes it I don't know just really nice So bear with me there, we're nearly finished, but I just want to come back and um, glaze over the top here. And so this is how all of my swatch cards should be finished, but I just haven't done this part yet. So just a glaze over the top of the uh, mass tone there to see how it glazes. And then to uh, try and lift a little part here to see how staining it is. So it actually lifted pretty well. And then I forgot about a color that I wanted to swatch it next to as well so you can kind of see. This is the Nibs Pens and Inks Bluebell. I love this color so I have this in, I actually have this color on the way and I have it in a palette that I'm making for my sister for her birthday. So um, it actually is a pretty close match as well and it, yeah if you actually wanted to, so I'm going to show you a little thing here if you if you're not sure how to start with with you know watercolors you can just get a little mint tin 
and get a couple of colors and put them in there and just see how you like it um, I would recommend like if you want a um, blue you know red and yellow or you could get um, from her shop and so here's where I, I am doing the ultramarine blue but from her shop you could actually get the bluebell uh, a nicola and like a georgia which is a gold so the nicola is like a um, bright pink sort of sparkly as well so you could just get those three and you'd have a little mixing set which would be really nice as well okay but so you can see the ultramarine deep and then we have this smalt and now i'm going to use the daniel smith lavender so my sister has this color it's not one that i really keep on my palette because i've got the smalt and i can use it with the white if i want to so you can see there we have the ultramarine the smalt the lavender and then the smalt and white so they are all pretty similar i'd say it's just kind of the little differences if you have a limited palette if you're you know what you're looking to paint what you're looking to mix it with and things like that and i'm going to show you here so here is the palette and then here is another palette with the same browns and also purples but with peach instead of the blue so you can see how different you know you've got brown um, purple and then blue or brown purple and peach and it makes the whole um, painting completely different so i am thankful if you've made it this far and i will see you guys soon here's our dove i hope you all had a really happy easter and that everyone is safe and well and um, i will be back as soon as i can bye for now